So the skin is also involved in the majority of patients with SLE. SLE. And so there's an erythematous or maculopapular eruption over the malar eminences and on uh, the bridge of the nose, which is referred to as the butterfly pattern, and it's observed in about half or 50%. So here you've probably seen about a thousand of these video or these uh, pictures here of the malar rash, but you know right here is if I was to draw underneath the skin there. This bone right here would be the zygomatic bone, and this would be the maxilla here, and of course this would be the nasal bone. But the mac, uh, this uh, maculopapular rash, or this butterfly rash, this malar rash, is because there's a malar eminence right here on the zygomatic bone, so that's where that name comes from. And so that's kind of the rash right there and it spares the nasolabial foe so like if you do a big smile your cheeks will kind of puff out that's the nasolabial fold right there so and then the UV light exacerbates the erythema so called photosensitivity so when you go out in the sun um, you know there's uh, increased redness in the areas where the sun hit that UV light exacerbates that so histologically, there's a liquefactive degeneration at the basal layer of the epidermis, and so um, if we don't. If you don't know what the basal layer is, I mean, here's a shot of a picture of the epidermis. So here's the epidermis from here to here. That's the epidermis, and then here's the dermis, and then below that there's the hypodermis. But you know you have the Langerhans cells and the and the melanocytes, which are right here, which give you black pigment or give you pigment in your skin. And then here's the keratinocytes. So the basal layer is where the keratinocytes reside. All these little cells, they're the keratinocytes. These are where your skin cells reside. And what happens is that they they you know they replicate. And so one cell kind of gets pushed up and the other cell stays there. And if you can imagine this replicating five times, well, now the cell is going to be five times, you know, five cells away from its original location. And so that's kind of what happens is the cells replicate and they kind of move upwards and m upwards and upwards. And then once they die, then the skin cells f f slough off. Now there's five or sorry four layers in the epidermis. There's the basal layer, the mucosal layer, granular granular layer, and horny layer. So these are all the layers of the epidermis. So at the basal layer of the epidermis, so at this layer right here where these keratinocytes and these melanocytes reside, you see liquefactive degeneration and you see edema at the dermal epid epidermal junction so at this junction right here you see edema and then you see mononuclear infiltrates around the blood vessels and skin appendages and so you can kind of so I've got some slides here and you can kind of see so here's the basal layer cuz this is the dermis right here with all the collagen and fiber so right here is kind of the basal layer as you kind of come through here and you can kind of see you know some stuff happening here some stuff happening through here right through here so that's kind of where we see that degeneration and right here you can see it pretty good in this slide is there's all kinds of stuff happening right through here and then on immunofluorescent microscopy reveals the deposition of the Ig and complement components. So when you when they you know do this technology, they can see they tag these Ig components and they can see they can see these Ig and these uh, complement. They can see the antibodies and this complement components right here at this uh, dermal layer. So you can kind of see that these these layers here have something going on and that something going on is the liquefactive degeneration edema and the mononuclear cells that infiltrate or come into that area
So let's go down to this, these parts right here. So there's joint involvement also in SLE and it's frequent but it's not associated with the anatomical or the joint deformity seen as in like rheumatoid arthritis for example. There's there's joint involvement but it's not it doesn't affect the ana the anatomy or you know you don't see that joint deformity. And we're going to talk about RA next. So and there is non-specific mononuclear cell infiltration in the synovial membranes. So we see, you know, these cells, <coughs> excuse me, these cells coming in. And there's no erosion of the membranes or destruction of our articular cartridge. And if there is, it's exceedingly, exceedingly rare. So there's also CNS involvement, the central nervous system. It's very common. You see focal neurological def deficits or the neuropsychiatric symptoms like uh, seizures and uh, psychosis. And it's focal, meaning this only happens in a few places. What happens is the vascular there's vascular lesions that cause ischemia and microinfarcts. And so that's kind of what's going on. And the small vessel angi angiopathy is so the problem or the pathology related to these vessels is the there's non-inflammatory intima proliferation and overt vasculitis or the, you know the inflammation of the vessels is very very uncommon. And so kind of what the kind of the theory is is that there's thrombosis that can be caused by the antiphospholipid antibodies that we talked about in the last few videos and uh, premature atherosclerosis may contribute to the CNS uh, ischemia as well and so you can just imagine that in all these cases you know it's the immune complex you know here's the antibody and its bindings to some antigen here and what this does is this complex embeds itself into the vascular system. If this is a blood vessel, it embeds itself into the vascular system throughout your body. And so this is kind of the pathology or the pathogenesis of all of these types of areas that we see. And uh, next is the spleen. And the spleen can be moderately enlarged. You know, you see capsular uh, fibrous thickening. You see follicular hyperplasia. You know, plasma cells and that come into the red pulp. You see the central penicillary arteries that, that show thickening and perivascular fibrosis. And they produce these onion skin lesions. So if here's an onion, you can see how they kind of are in layers here. Well, that's kind of what's happening in here. So thank you, Dr. Mellers, for uh, doing this slide. But there is, um, let me change here colors, so you can see these kind of onion skin lesions in the spleen here. And that's from SLE. And I think there's other diseases that cause these, skin, these onion skin lesions, but SLE is one of them. Next, we move on to, oh, I forgot to add up here. There is a theory uh, theory about uh, antibodies, antibodies um, for CNS. So there is a theory that some of these antibodies, because, you know, the main idea of SLE is uh, you've lost the the pathway of self tolerance and there's and there's uh, your lymphocytes can get out your T cells and B cells can get out and start producing or destroying certain cells through uh, antibodies and there the theory is that there's some antibodies that are attracted to some of the CNS cells and that's what causes this some of these CNS problems but that theory is unproven unproven or unsupported and so this more vascular approach is kind of the theory that's going on. So there's the involvement of the heart. There's pericardi pericarditis and myocarditis. 
First, we'll talk about pericarditis. So pericarditis is an inflammation of the pericardium. Or what is the pericardium? It's the fiber sacs surrounding the, the heart. So let's do a little anatomy here. We got a picture here. And here, the outside layer. Um, change colors here. The outside layer is the fibrous pericardium. So this layer right here is the fibrous pericardium. Next inside is the serous pericardium. And there's two layers. There's the parietal layer and the visceral layer, or the epicardium. So there's three per pericardiums. The first one that lies right against the heart is a visceral epicardium. And then there's what they call the pericardial cavity. And so what happens is there's kind of a fluid in here because fluid will decrease uh, friction because your heart's like pumping in and out, in and out a lot, every day, every second, every minute. So there's a lot of movement here. And so if there's not some kind of fluid here, it'll be like you're getting a blister here, you know, and because of the friction. So there's a little fluid in here that kind of decreases this uh, friction here. So you got the visceral, the visceral pericardium, the parietal serous pericardium, and then you have the fibrous pericardium. And so what that ha what that does is pericardius is the inflammation of the pericardium. So this inflammation, if there's inflammation here, it can be painful, it can feel like you're having a heart attack, cause chest pain. So that could be, that's, that's some of the pericarditis that's involved in SLE. This picture will save for the myocarditis. So myocarditis is the nonspecific uh, mononuclear cell infiltrial. So you see these mononuclear cells kind of coming in. And that's just because these mononuclear cells are coming in to kind of destroy these immunocomplexes. You see valvar lesions called Libin, Lib, Libman Sachs endocarditis. And so what kind of what happens here is you have uh, one to three millimeter warty deposits on either surface of these leaf leaflets. So you have valves in your heart that allow the blood to stay in certain chambers. So as you know, blood enters, this valve's got to open, and then it closes, and then the heart contracts, and then blood is pushed out through this valve. So on all of these valves, you got the semilunar valves, and then you have the tricuspid, uh, the sorry, the tricuspid and the bicuspid valve. But any anyway, these warty deposits will start depositing on these valves. It can be on the un, it could be on where the blood hits the flow of blood, or it can be on the backside. And so what happens is over time, obviously these warty deposits are gonna cause a dysfunction in these valves and that can be a big problem. So patients also show uh, clinical and anatomical manifestations of coronary arteries, artery disease and the basis of accelerated atherosclerosis is not completely understood but it's multifactorial and you know obviously if you have these immunocomplexes depositing on this coronary vasculature then this endothelial cells inside the vascular is going to be damaged. Another thing too is this Lehman Sachs endocarditis. It's not as common anymore as because we have these steroid or treatments uh, and what you know and that and that can kind of help with that. However, because of this glucocorticoid treatment, this causes alterations in lipid metabolism and renal disease is really common in SLE. So if, and we kind of talked about that in the last few videos, is that when you have renal disease, you can have hypertension because there's not enough perfusion going through those glomeruli and that can cause high blood pressure. And both of lipid metabolism and high blood pressure are both risk factors for atherosclerosis. So that's probably why we see some atherosclerosis in these patients. 
Okay, well that finishes up everything for SLE and the morphology of SLE and hopefully we can kind of get a good grasp of what's going on for systemic lupus erythematosus.